Hello friends, this video on isolation of elements part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now we'll talk about the uses of aluminium. The uses of aluminium includes aluminium foils. It is used to make paints. It is used for the extraction of uh, chlorine and, and magnesium. It is also used for electrical wiring. It is also used to create alloy. This alloy is you must have heard about the alloy wheel in the car. So these are the various applications of aluminium. We talk about the copper. Copper is used to create wires, to make pipes, copper pipes. It is also used in geysers. It is also used to create alloys like brass, bronze, German silver. In brass, if you see, it has 40% uh, zinc, 60% copper. Bronze, if you see, bronze is uh, copper and tin. If you talk about the German silver, you have copper almost 25 to 30 percent. Then you have zinc in this, 20 almost 30 percent. Then you have nickel again, almost 40 percent, 40 to 50 percent. So you see, this copper is also used to make different alloys. If you talk about zinc, uses of zinc. Zinc is used for galvanizing iron. If you see, this is all iron pipe. It is galvanized using zinc. It looks like zinc, right? It's not zinc. It's actually iron. It is galvanized because it increases the life uh, longevity, longevity of the pipe. It is used in battery. Zinc is used in battery. It is also used to create alloys, brass and German silver. In brass, you have almost 40% uh, zinc. In German silver, you have almost 25 to 30% zinc. It is also used to make dyes and paints. Talk about the uses of iron. Iron, this is uh, used for casting, uh, creating cast, cast irons, right? Railway sleepers and casting stoves, gutter pipes. Iron is used. Right? Rot iron, as I told, it is. this is all, all example of cast iron. Talk about the wrought iron, which are uh, very good. They are used to make anchors for ships. They are also used to make uh, body of the car. Also used to make uh, utensils. Utensils. Stainless steel used iron actually. It is used to make these uh, big big buildings. Right. Used to make wires. So a lot of applications of uh, iron. Used to make bridges. Also wrought iron is used to make bridges also. Let's take some numerical now. See, zinc is more reactive than copper. Zinc is more reactive than copper. We have seen this from the reactivity series also. If you see, if you react zinc and copper 2 plus, what you get is zinc 2 plus and copper. Correct? Zinc is more reactive. So, zinc will love to be in this state. Copper will love to be in the copper state. Correct. Now to displace zinc, a more reactive metal will be required. So if you want to make Zn2 plus to some to zinc, I need some metal. And this metal has to be more reactive. Correct? Because a more reactive metal will displace uh, any metal oxide or sulfide to metal. So if you want to displace zinc from Zn2 plus to zinc, you need a more reactive metal. Right? And this metal can be my magnesium, calcium, potassium. But if you talk about the hydrometallurgy, all these will react with water. All these will react with water and will form Hydrogen gas, for example, potassium will react with water to form KOH and hydrogen gas. When you talk about hydrometallurgy, water is involved. But if water is involved, you can't use these metals. Thus, copper can be extracted using hydrometallurgy because copper can be extracted using zinc. Right? But if you talk about other metals, 
they can't be extracted. Sorry, if you talk about zinc, zinc can't be extracted because zinc is little reactive metal and you need more reactive metal to reduce zinc. And the other, the more reactive metal like magnesium, calcium and potassium, they react with water. Since they react with water, they can't be used in the hydrometallurgy process. Since these can't be used in hydrometallurgy process, you can't actually reduce zinc. You can't actually reduce zinc, that means you can't extract zinc using hydrometallurgy process. Correct? So this is my zinc coated and this is my copper. The next is, what is the role of depressants in the froth flotation process? So the question is, what is the role of depressants in the froth flotation process? So we have seen that actually the depressant is used to separate two sulphide ores. So for example, I have a sulphide ore which has two different kind of uh, sulphides, for example, PBS and JNS, and I want to separate them. Then I have to use depressant and these depressants work by selectively preventing one ore to mix with this froth. Right? For example, for this case, we use NaCNS as depressant. Correct? So, NaCN will selectively allow PBS to come in contact with froth, but it will not allow ZNS to come in contact with the froth. How? See, NaCN will actually react with ZNS in form of complex. And this complex, this complex will not stick to froth. But my NaCN, when you react with PBS, there will not be any reaction. So this PBS will stick to froth. Correct. The next is, why is the extraction of copper from copper pyrite more difficult than from its oxide ore to reduction. So we have seen that the sulphides ore are more stable and this pyrites are nothing but sulphides. If you see the copper pyrite, there is nothing but CuFeS2, right, or Cu2S, these are all pyrites or CuS, these are all sulphide ores. So sulphide ores are more stable, Sulf sulphides. Ores are more stable than oxide ores. It is very difficult to reduce sulfide ores, right? So with the Gibbs, Gibbs energy chart, you can actually understand why. So since sulfide ores are more stable, it is more difficult to extract copper directly from the sulfide ore. So typically, what we do, we do the roasting part, we convert the sulfide ore into oxide, and then we reduce oxide to metal. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get free study materials, find tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.